welcome everyone to this week's Citizens Climate Lobby training program. It's a weekly webinar of CCLs that provides supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training opportunities on topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'm your host tonight, <clears throat> Brett Sees, and our topic is this, planning your March drop-off at your member of Congress's local office. This is March and early April, 2024. Your member of Congresses will be working in their state or district offices during the last week of March and the first week of April. So tonight for our training, we're gonna learn more recommendations to help your members keep the policies in CCL's policy agenda front and center by some ideas to drop off material that highlight climate policy has strong support in your district while building that crucial relationship with the office. And to help us tonight, I'm going to be joined by our wonderful liaison coordinator team. We are going to hear first from Jennifer Tyler, Senior Director of Government Affairs for CCL. And then towards the end, we'll have the chance to hear directly from Mindy Aller, our Northwind Regional Director as well, about some of the examples that we've seen throughout the years. In the meantime, if we've done our job well, we're going to hopefully have everyone tuning in walk away with the following three learning goals. Number one, having the chance to review the background of what a drop-off is and why it's important. We're going to explore some recommendations on what you might consider delivering and how you can maximize your delivery's impact when you have those plans. And we'll have the chance to share stories from the field as well as invite all of you. I know looking around the room, there's several of us on the line tonight that have done something like this, I'm sure in the past. I'd love to hear what you've tried, what you found successful, what you are still going to be experimenting with this year, the floor is ours, the canvas is empty, let's start painting. So our agenda is gonna be straightforward. We'll start with a little background, then we'll dive into why it's important, hearing directly from Jen. We'll talk about what we should consider delivering, talk about how to best make that delivery, highlight some stories from the field and open up for Q&A. And without further ado, let's just jump in with a little reminder of what it is we're actually talking about. So for background, every year in the spring, members of Congress return Turn home for spring recess, where they'll be in district. Now, for the majority of our drop-offs, we don't anticipate that you'll actually see your member of Congress at the office. Although, if you have a great relationship with your member of Congress and their staff, that's certainly a great possibility. Regardless of whether or not they are there, we are encouraging you to use this opportunity to build that relationship with your member of Congress's staff by connecting with them on a personal face-to-face -face level by going to their office and having the chance to demonstrate strong support from some of the examples that we'll highlight as some options in a bit that you are generating in that district, really tooting your own horn, showing that evidence and advocacy that you've been up to, and while at the same time having the chance to deepen that key role that district staff play in policy making. One of the secrets that I've at least learned a lot throughout um, my time with CCL, learning from uh, my colleagues who happen, you know, several of them in our government affairs team, including Jen, who we'll hear from um, in just a moment, highlight the important role that district staff play. And so even if you're not able to see your member of Congress or have that be a part of your drop off, let's talk about why it is so key to use this drop-off as a way to deepen your connection with district staff. And for that, what I'm actually going to do is turn to Jen, and we'll hear her advice and reflections on why that's the case. We spend a lot of time focusing on the D.C. staff of congressional offices, and rightly so. We want to move our member of Congress, have them vote and co-sponsor um, pieces of legislation that we care about. But at the same time, there's a lot of importance that district staff have. It varies office from office, but when I was on the Hill, um, when we were making a decision as a DC team, whether to take a meeting or maybe we had competing priorities at one time, we didn't have enough space in the calendar, um, or we just didn't know, you know how trustful, how trustworthy and reliable is this group, uh, we'd talk to the district staff. The district staff of most Hill offices are kind of the keepers of the knowledge of what's going on in the district, who are the players, what is the relationship like with those individual groups or, or groups of constituents, and also what's the reputation of those constituents in the district. 
So there's many times where I would call our district director or district staff and say, hey, you know, this group wants another meeting or this group's talking to us about a bill. What have your interactions been like with them in the past year? Um, and sometimes, you know, we'd hear some negative things um, that they weren't super nice to district staff or maybe they had no relationship. But the times that the groups like our CCL chapter had really positive relationships with our district staff were the times where we knew, okay, we can go full steam ahead working with this, working with this group, partnering with them, um, and also knew that they were going to be an ally to us. If someone's taking the time to get to know the district staff as well as the DC staff, they're really putting in an effort to be active in the community, maybe to show up at community functions, at town halls, at other events where district staff might be. Um, that just shows that that group is going to be a trusted ally of that office, not just a group that's going to um, make asks or just demonize uh, the member of Congress. So I think there's a real opportunity here for us to make an impact, to develop that relationship with district staff, whether you're dropping off a bunch of letters about specific policy or dropping off some note cards, um, just a friendly, a friendly gesture to the district staff. We want to build that relationship. We want them to know we're there, we're in the community. Uh, we care about them and the work they're doing as much as we care about the DC staff. And we're really ready to partner with them, work with them, work with the entire office and support the member as much as we can in finding common ground and moving the entire staff and member forward. So definitely a big opportunity here. Hopefully a lot of us can capitalize on building that relationship with district staff, which is only going to enhance our ability to connect with and move the DC staff and ultimately the member of Congress forward on climate. That is so helpful to hear. and. Um... You know, as I was tuning in and listening to it again, a couple of the key things that really stood out to me with what Jen was sharing with this big opportunity include thinking about the district staff as keepers of knowledge and trusted allies. So just hearing again that the staff in DC turn to district staff, call them up even to check in and find out about what relationship have been like to really play that gatekeeping or that chance to find out more to decide whether or not to take on that extra meeting. That role is key. And also then thinking about what we can do in those meetings to show that we do want to be an ally in moving our member and you know helping encourage them, pushing them, highlighting how they can be the climate champion that we want them to be forward further and further. I think that's a great way of framing it and really appreciate that inside advice from your time on the Hill, Jen. So what I'd like to do next is ask you all to share in the chat kind of locally what your plans are formulating around how you plan to use the drop-offs and what you include in your you know, your delivery or your chance to make a drop-off. I've got some examples here, um, but again, these aren't the whole swath of options. This is just a beginning list, if you will. And uh, I'd love to hear uh, from others as well tonight on what you think is going to be impactful for moving and connecting with your member. Uh, but again, some of these ideas for what to deliver, the, you know, the whole goal, again, is building that relationship and demonstrating a steady drumbeat of climate advocacy in your district, the increased support that you're building for climate policy. And some of the ways that you can highlight that include bringing along a bunch of signed constituent letter forms or thank you cards or photos signed by chapter members, you know, however you want to generate kind of that constituent touch handwritten letters even. I've heard of chapters that are planning um, already this past month and this current upcoming weekend at their chapter meetings to generate a bunch of letters, handwritten notes uh, from all of the chapter attendees to bring with them as well. Uh, just a little reminder that uh, when we say constituent comment form, what does that mean? Well, we've actually updated them. I'll put a link to them in the chat when we um, had the new Energy Innovation Act reintroduced. This past fall, we had the chance to kind of freshen up what those look like. And so now you can see that on the uh, left-hand side, that's the new updated design for um, specifically advocating for the Energy Innovation Act in this session, HR 5744. And then on the right, you know, if, if your ask isn't going to be specifically on the Energy Innovation Act, we have a more kind of general constituent comment form too with the same design with a chance for you and your team to be able to write in what you are working with your member of Congress for the specific policy solution as part of CCL's policy agenda suite. 
So uh, what I'm going to do actually before pivoting back to some of these other ideas is just sharing in the chat here. Cheryl is sh um, planning on dropping off constituent comment forms using the form we just talked about. Great to hear, Cheryl. Howard has uh, solicited the chapter to create a letter and email them to me as a chapter leader, and they'll be delivering that in hand at the district office. I love that creative idea, Howard. We're going to have um, Matthew's team deliver thank you cards signed by constituents from around the spread out 116th district, as well as homemade cookies. I love that one, two combination there, Matthew. You'll hear a couple of these stories and a little bit of um, some of the legacy and impact that that's had. And Alex shares here, they're going to visit each of the member of Congress's four different drop-offs with constituent comment letters, handwritten letters, an op-ed LTE printout, eight pages, double-sided color. Oh my gosh, that you've nicely formatted to make a great impression to really highlight the op-eds, LTEs, and an article from your amazing Montana snowman protest recently. That is absolutely, I think, a really powerful way to do that. And a big shout out from one terrible snowpack area of the country to another. So sorry to hear about uh, the impact that's had on Montana, all of the outdoor and winter industry, I'm sure, just like it has been here in Minnesota. So um, these examples are doing a great job of highlighting, again, those um, options that we've provided in the action sheet for the last couple of months. You've heard as well, in addition to handwritten letters or comments, we have media clippings. You can you know, generate even a special printout. I love that. Of a whole media folder. Um, you can have a community leader support summary. You know, we have monthly endorsement reports that are generated to our grass tops engagement managers. You can work with them, make sure that you highlight any of the <clears throat> recent sign-ons or even bring a local community leader with you if you want, highlighting kind of their support and um, again, demonstrating the widespread social support in the district for climate action. And then creative ideas we've heard of from baked goods, kids' drawings, We've even had some chapters drop off flowers, especially after um, their member of Congress got out of surgery or experienced a loss of a family member. You name it, there's a lot of ways to make that touch. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is just thinking through, so you've got your plan as a team. You've got kind of the focal point of what you'll be using as your drop off. How do you make sure to maximize the impact? Well, the key thing here is you want to make sure that you're coordinating, especially if you come from a chapter that shares a congressional district with multiple other cities and chapters in CCL. The ask that we have is to make sure to let your liaison know what your plans are and have them coordinate if there are other chapters that are interested or suggest you know who else to make sure to be in sync with if they're going to be joining you, especially if you're on the Senate side of things. Um, we want to make sure that you're copying your CCL Senate liaisons and group leaders throughout the state to designate a chapter, you know, to really be the lead in collating the items to be dropped off and scheduled. Um, and I uh, would love to hear especially from anyone on the line here tonight that is doing that. Once you've confirmed those plans and made sure kind of the, the important roles are all coordinated and on the same page, we want to do three things with the actual event. Number one, when you get there, make sure that you're actually prepared to take some photos. You can see this great photo of a drop off at a South Dakota office um, and having the chance to be able to really speak to and, and highlight getting permission from the staff ahead of time, just so that you're not going to surprise them or ambush them with photos. You can even just ask right when you get there to make sure that, you know, confirm that they're okay with photos being taken. And then once those photos are taken, we want to make sure that you share them far and wide on your social channels. If you, your chapter don't have social, you can still easily share them with your state or other places nearby that might. And then you, you know, to make sure to get them on the, the national media side for CCL and all of our other content, we'd love to have you email them to marketing at citizensclimate.org. Any photos you take, please send those along. We can't wait to story tell along with you and help generate buzz and excitement around the importance of making these deliveries. So again, that's marketing at citizensclimate.org to, to send those to. And then lastly, we also want to make sure when all is done, you can celebrate first if you want. You don't have to do this in this precise order. But don't forget to log reaction too, so that we can get a good tally across the country of all the March drop-offs that we've done. And to do that, again, if you don't know where the action tracker link is, it's simply cclusa.org forward slash action tracker. 
So with that, um, before opening it up uh, for other stories from the field, what I'd love to do just tonight is close um, by having the chance for Mindy to share from her role as our li uh, liaison coordinator um, support across the country, what she's heard has really made a difference with some of these relationships built from drop-offs. So I'm just going to pass it to Mindy for a couple of great anecdotes. Um, one example that I think of when it comes to building relationship, there uh, were two women in a small town that would regularly bring cookies to their district office. Uh, and I happened to be lobbying with them when they were in D.C. And they walked into the office in D.C. And one of the staff people that uh, had been in the district office now worked in the D.C. office, heard their voices and came out to give them a big hug uh, before their lobby meeting started. And their lobby meeting was not with this particular staff person. Their lobby meeting was with another staff person. But I just watched that, that he was just uh, thrilled to hear their voices and to come out and say hello and give them a hug um, from all the times that they had brought things to the district office. Um, and this was not a member of Congress that that necessarily did what they wanted them to. So uh, it wasn't like the, it was an easy relationship with the member of Congress, but that was really the kind of relationship they'd built with the staff. And so the staff they were meeting with clearly saw that they already had that relationship with another staff person, and it clearly um, made the meeting go easier. So that's the power of being able to work um, to, to making connections with the district office. So another uh, another example uh, or an example I have of really good listening, um, Carly, who's one of our volunteers in Minnesota, when she went into the district office and brought a bunch of cookies one time, um, discovered that the person that was at the front desk, the receptionist, um, was gluten free and had a child with a number of different special allerg food allergies. So the next time that uh, Carly went back with treats for the office, she had a special one that fit those food allergy requirements that she brought just for the receptionist. Um, and time and again, this happened multiple times that she would bring treats to the office with something special for the receptionist. And that just really touched the receptionist and, and, and she became someone very memorable um, because she had really listened, heard that unique experience and uh, had reached out to make that connection um, uh, by bringing a special treat. I love that. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a big good with a food allergy, just the, the simple premise of making sure as you're using these opportunities to connect, that you're also listening in to finding ways from whatever you're gaining um, to really build that relationship forward, I think is key. So thank you so much, Mindy, for highlighting those stories. A couple other pieces of advice. Number one, one of the common questions that we've gotten from liaisons is, should we call ahead to the office to let them know about our plans, or do you recommend just stopping by? Now, we've left this open for you and your liaison and local team to coordinate what you think will be best, but I would suggest that if you have put in the effort to really make a plan and make sure that you know, you've got the delivery mapped out and you know who's going to be there, it doesn't take much more to make sure to call ahead of time and coordinate with the office to see how you could make sure to maximize the impact. I know we've heard from some of our offices that they're actually going to coordinate when the member of Congress is there themselves so that they can celebrate and love up on the member. Um, and even if that's not the case, which I'm guessing will be for the majority of our drop-offs, having the chance for the district office to know when to expect you and to have that you know, kind of smoothed out so that it's maximally impactful and they're not distracted by another meeting or fielding another constituent service, I think is a really ideal to make sure that uh, your drop off is going to have that relational impact that you're looking for. The other thing that we've been asked is, how will I know if I've gotten enough letters or how will I know, you know, am I bringing enough evidence? And the answer is going to depend on the district and who you are and obviously how strong your chapter is and you know what you think is going to be a realistic level and goal to set. But the origin of this goal, again, comes from our advice from our DC team, which reminds us that in order for members of Congress to stay engaged on what's happening in the district, the legislative director will call back and have a weekly report from the district staff and during that report, they often ask, you know, what are the trending or the you know, top three or five issues that you've seen come up in the district this week from the phone calls that you've had, from the conversations with people that you've met with. 
And our goal is to make that threshold so that across the country, when that next call happens with a legislative director, they can say this week, we heard directly from X number of climate constituents, climate concerned you know, volunteers in the district that want the member to do this, that want the member to co-sponsor the Energy Innovation Act or to step forward on clean energy permitting reform or to make sure to protect the climate provisions within the Inflation Reduction Act portion of the farm bill. That's gonna be the real goal to make sure that we can have our impact not only ripple out and impact uh, positively the relationship with the staff in the district, but also make that cut and uh, have the attention of the legislative director with the trending reports from the field. The last thing that I wanna think through when we're talking about how to make an impact with your delivery is the element of storytelling. You and your team are doing a lot of work to bring the voices of constituents to the office. And what I would like to encourage everyone to do is have a plan so that when you get there, you know how you're going to make those stories come alive. A couple of examples of what I mean by that. If you're bringing a big stack of constituent comments, make sure to put two or three at the top that have a very powerful story that are talking about the climate impacts of why that individual in the district is so concerned about stepping up and leading on climate policy. If you're bringing the the handwritten cards or the the art of um, young adults, you know, if and if you're bringing children's art or some other handmade good, being able to tell the story of the person that made it, highlighting and centering the human experience so that the drop-off not only feels like a transfer of evidence, but also a story with it, to be able to name why and who we, to be able to name who we are as volunteers that are concerned about this important issue and why it matters to us and therefore should as well for the member of Congress. That is a wonderful opportunity we have to connect with these drop-offs. So know that we look forward to hearing all about how you make that story come alive with your team. And please know, we'd absolutely love to hear about your success in the forums. So here's a quick review of how to find that information. Doing in here as a liaison on the liaison forums, especially kind of stimulating, inspiring each other. And then, especially if you're not a liaison or in general, you just wanna share across our site-wide forums, that's the link here that I've put. We'd absolutely love to make sure to just be able to center some of these stories in our upcoming future weekly briefings in our social media content, in any of the storytelling that we can do as an organization to inspire more of this happening across the country. Um, so please be inspired to brag up on yourselves. Let us know how it went. Uh, don't hold back. Give us all the great details and make sure to take some great photos too. So with that, I hope that you found tonight's training inspiring and um, educational. Um, as always, if you have feedback, please let me know what we can continue to do to deepen the training support that we provide. And I'll stay on here for any other questions, uh, but know that that's the end of our content tonight. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. Like what you hear? Recommend us to your friends and make sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us show up on other listeners' feeds. Feel free to pass on any suggestions for future episodes in the comments as well. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.